Today's episode is brought to you by Figs. If you know a doctor or a nurse or a dentist or anyone in the medical profession, they could use some new scrubs, and Figs is the best place to get them. Also, today we're brought to you by me, Undies. Speaking of clothing that could be worn by doctors, I guess, me, Undies is getting burpy for <laughs> Halloween. So more burps are coming your way. Ooh. Look out, me undies. Let's get into this podcast. <laughs> Hello, everybody. It's time for Ghosts and Friend Dogs. Friend Dogs in the morning. In the morning. Right here, live, 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 live. In four-hour recording studio. Recording. Wake your ass up, Mr. Friend Dogs in the morning. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the exciting episode of Cox and Crandor in the morning. You know what? I'm going to roll these three dice. Why? What? What? Six, five, three. Six, five, three? Sounds like an area code. Eight, six, seven, five, three, oh, nine. Uh-huh. Jenny, Jenny. <laughs> Who could he turn to? That song's just about a dude trying to, like, imagine what a girl in a bathroom stall's like. <laughs> Wait, what? right? Because he sees her number in the bathroom stall, I think, or on the wall next to the phone, one of the two, what and he wants shit? to know who that Jenny is. Eight six seven five three zero nine is the number he sees, and he's like, "Oh, I wonder what it'd be like to call her." Is that that's really what it? that song's about? Yes, that's what that song's about. Uh, let's see the lyrics, Jenny, Jenny, who can I turn to? You give me something I can hold on to. I know you'll think I'm like the others before who saw your name and number on the wall. Oh yeah, yes. See, he it's him thinking about calling this girl and wondering what it would be like and what she is like. Huh. And how he's like, maybe she's the one. Maybe she's she's the girl that's going to like make me not a creep. But spoiler, you're still a creep, my friend. And on top of that, the song is like it only gives like the last seven numbers. So it's like any area code. So well, if, for a while, that was a number people could call. Like people who had that number in your area code could be called with that. Ah, uh, I see. Mm -hmm. And so people would dial that number all the time, and they people eventually, I think they had to remove it out of rotation. <laughs> that was pretty funny. That's like, well, not for yep. the people, but you know. Yeah, I mean, for <laughs> for everyone else, hilarious. You're like, excuse <laughs> me, Jenny, and they're like, ah, ha, ha, you got me, and they hang up on you. I just Google it. There's somebody that had that number. And they said Charles Shambarger is now retired in Nebraska, but he'll never forget the flood of phone calls he got saying, is Jenny there? It started with an isolated phone call. He said, we'd get a phone call. Is Jenny there? I'd say, no, sorry, wrong number. Maybe a couple nights later, I'd get another phone call. Is Jenny there? Damn. It's nonstop. You think eventually, Jenny's. if I had that phone number, eventually I'd just hire someone. I'd like, get a new phone number, <laughs> keep that phone number, and hire someone to be like, Jenny here. I would do that. <laughs> I would do that for all of us. And I'd yeah. have her work full time and be like, you're now Jenny. <laughs> or I'd just hire someone named Jenny and save us the trouble. Like, yeah, why don't you just get a new phone number? Well, because it's your phone number, man. Yeah, but like, it's not Think of all it. the proms. Think of all the proms you would have had. Who made that song? Uh, Tommy Two-Tone. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you to discover who made that song. Tommy Two-Tone? <laughs> who? What else did Tommy Two-Tone make? <laughs> I don't the think way they made you anything. say his name. The way you say his name. Is <laughs> Tommy Tutone. <laughs> what? What is it? It's correct. But for some reason, the way you say Tutone. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Tutone. Tommy Tutone. <laughs> Do I just overpronounce it? Tutone? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the album was it's called Tom, to Tommy Tutone 2. <laughs> what the shit? <laughs> <laughs> How does that even make sense? Tommy Two Tone Two. <laughs> so their album, their first album, was called Tommy Two Tone One, or just Tommy Two Tone? I don't think so. I hope not. Tommy Two Tone Two is the second album. Tommy right, two, right. Tommy Two Tone first album was called Tommy Two Tone. Sure. Hence Tommy Two Tone Two. That's what I'm saying. Did they ever make? Okay, so they made Tommy Two Tone. Wait, why are they so dumb? Tommy Two Tone. Why wasn't it just called Tommy? Two tone. Yeah. For the second, <laughs> the second album. Yeah. Wait a minute. Now That's I'm confused. Dumb. And then <laughs> they had their third album was National Emotion. Yeah, well, that's why it didn't do as good. That's why no and one heard of Tommy Two Tone. 13 years later in 96, they released Nervous Love. And then in well, 98, they released. <laughs> 
two tone dot RTF. <laughs> what? <laughs> two tone dot RTF. I think they just released a file. <laughs> <laughs> Accidentally, they sent out the wrong email. <laughs> it's not really music. It's more of a rich text document. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's the Tommy Two Tone era. Yeah, well, I mean, now we've known. Now we know more than we ever needed to know about Tommy Two Tone. Yeah, I don't think I want to learn anymore, honestly. Yeah, I think we're good. I think we're good. Mm -hmm. I think we've learned all we really need to know. So welcome to the Cox Hello, and everyone. podcast. Oh my God! This past weekend. <laughs> I went to the L.A. Comic-Con. Oh. It used to be Stanley's Comic-Con. I'm not sure if it changed after his death or if it changed before that. It is lovely. I'm just going to say it's a lovely venue, just not for me. I think I'm over big conventions. The smaller the convention, the better, because, yeah. oh my God, there were so many people it was insane. It was insane. <laughs> and they did a thing that I don't like at conventions. They put their main stage in the same hall as the exhibitor hall. So people would stop and watch what was going on in the main stage instead of moving. And so getting around was the worst. And I arrived right as uh, Kevin Smith and Jason Mewes were doing like their Sideshow Bob and, you know, Jay and Silent oh, yeah. Bob Sideshow Bob. <laughs> Jay and Sideshow Bob. <laughs> they were doing Simpson Sideshow Bob. <laughs> Uh, they were doing Jay and Silent Bob. It was very funny. They had like a whole bit there. It was very awesome. But no one was moving. And it was just like, oh my God. I just, I have to get to the other side of this room. Please just go. So I kept having to push <laughs> past people. And I hit like little kids inside. I felt terrible. I'm like, sorry, sorry. And I like hit cosplayers the who Fortnite were like barely thing. trying to keep their costume alive. And I'm like, I just got to get to, okay, I got to get to the other room, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i just can't i can't do that anymore parking took me 45 minutes to find a place i had to park 12 blocks away <laughs> the parking in lots around the convention center was 50 dollars 50 dollars that's so much for parking i know i i drove all Dude, the way you could have bought like half an airpod for that i, I literally just should have taken a lift or an uber at that point hmm. i parked 12 blocks away. I could have been justified at 12 blocks away getting an Uber or Lyft and taking it to the convention center. <laughs> I was I was like, all right, fine. So I walked down there, and then I stood in another ridiculous line. The line to get in was insane. Thankfully, our dear friend Davis was like, bro, go over to this area and tell them you're going to the press area. And I was like, okay. And so they like, they like let me in. They didn't even question it. No, I was like, yes, I'm going to press. And they're like, okay, come on in. It's like, no one questioned it. Davis. I could have been anybody. That one packs where, like, Davis would just tell us, like, the best way to get into things is to just pretend like you're an idiot and nobody will question it. It's like you kind of walk in the press area and just look around being like, oh, is this where I'm supposed to be? I guess it is. And then everyone's like, ah, oh, they're just dumb. And they just let you in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's kind of what happened. As I walked in, I was like, I'm looking for the press area. And they were like, oh, right this way. And they just let me in past security. <laughs> I walked in. I had no badge. I had no credentials. I noticed going into the actual con, once you get past the main security area outside, there's no one inside checking your credentials. Oh, yeah. So I could have just walked in if I wanted to. But I went over to the press area and got my badge and was like, okay, and then went on in. But huh. Like, what a crazy, just the whole day was crazy. <laughs> I I had a ton of fun hanging out with friends and, and doing a panel and stuff. Like, that was great. Yeah. But I, there's a reason why, even at E3, I have to, I'm, I'm like, I plan every moment of E3. I do meetings. I stay off the main floor. Not because I'm hiding, because it's just a giant cluster F. It's, I can't do it. I... I have to hold in all my emotion instead of being like, just move! God damn it, just move! Yeah. Oh, man. You hold it's in, you're going you're gonna to stress yourself, you're going to destroy yourself. Well, that's why I only go to big conventions like once every so often. And most of the time I'm like, mm, I'm good. I'm going to pass. <laughs> They've gotten too big. It's like They're it's too just, big. Yeah, there's just I, too I'm many people. I'm telling you, it was... So, have you been to E3? Have you done it? You ha you've done yeah, E3, right? Yeah, we did. I did E3. That's when you had bronchitis and we had breakfast. Oh and you my were in the god, that's right. Like and I was hours. totally effed up. Yeah. <laughs> so you've done E3. Yeah. You know how big that is. Yeah. Imagine that, but it's like open to the public as well. Mm. Mm. So it was 
It was like too much. I I love conventions. I love meeting people. But when it's like too big, you can't do any of the things that you want to do, right? I couldn't stop to just look at a thing because there were crowds at everything. Yeah. And it was like, oh my God, I just want to take a minute and see like your weird fan art you've made or the weird dice you're selling or something. And it's impossible. Yeah. There's just so many people and you're like, well, okay, fine. I don't like, like, I don't mind big crowds, but I don't like big crowds. Like when you can't move, when yes. there's like so many people, it's like, I just, I get overwhelmed. Yeah. It's there's, there's a difference between crowded and unenjoyable. Yeah. And, and there are a lot of conventions, especially in big cities like New York city, comic con, uh, San Diego comic con, all those different things. They're just too big. You know, I guess People love money, so they're not going to limit the the ticket amount. But with yeah. that said, oh my god, it's insane! It's like too much, and I I don't understand why people suffer it. Does that make any sense? Like, yeah. why there are many conventions around the country that are just as good and not nearly as crowded. I guess it's the most <laughs> and, popular, so it's like we got to go to the popular one. I guess, man. There's so many great conventions around this beautiful nation and world of ours. And there are only a few that are just like, fill it to capacity. <laughs> yeah, I just got conventioned out over the last two years. Like, uh, I feel you. It's It just hits that point. You're just like, I've done it all. I've seen it all. It's the same stuff. It's like, just the traveling. And I'm just like, I'm just going to sit here and watch it on the computer. And then after smart, a while, you, you're smart. like, all right, you know, maybe I'll go back to one and like do that. And then you enjoy it a little more because you haven't been there in a while. Yeah, I, I'm say I'm always like that, but I'm a hypocrite. I'm always like, <laughs> ah, yeah, you know what? I'm good. But then someone's like, Jesse, we will pay you to come to our convention. I'm like, all right, I'm in. Let's do it. <laughs> you talk me into it. I'm like, I'm not going to go to conventions this year. And then someone will be like, yes, you are. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I am. I totally am. Like, I think uh, in March, there's like the miniature convention here in Chicago. It's like uh, the con like one of the biggest conventions for like miniature gaming. And I was like, when dude, is that? it's in March. What day in March? It's called Adepticon. And it's Adepticon? March it so that's, 25th. Sounds like th did you say March 3-5th? <laughs> no, 25th. Oh, March 3-5th. <laughs> 25th like, what to the 29th. Hell? Yeah, it's apparently it's like one of the biggest miniature conventions. My favorite... <laughs> His, when you go to the Adepticon page, at least for me, there's just like, it's exactly how I would imagine it. <laughs> yeah. It's just, <laughs> my favorite part is like just the dudes in the corner just sitting there like, ugh. <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It's exactly what I think it would be. This is just like, I just want to go walk around, see stuff, and be like, nice. Like, you know, that's, I <laughs> nice. want to experience, these are like my favorite thing. Let's walk around and take it all in. Like something I haven't seen before. Like when you go to PAX, I'm like, I know what I'm going to get at PAX. When I go to E3, I'm like, I know what I'm going to get at E3. Go to BlizzCon, I'm like, I know what I'm going to get. But this, I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to get. So I'm ready to experience this. Well, that's why I went to that convention in Australia in Canberra. People were like, why did you come to Canberra? And everyone <laughs> kept asking me. And I was like, I have no idea what to expect here. I've never been here. <laughs> I couldn't tell you what this convention is going to be like. That's exciting. I yeah. love that stuff. I want to see weird stuff. Let's get crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I've hit that point. I'm like, you know what? Give me the crazy. But also it's, it's literally in your backyard. So it's oh, yeah. not That's that crazy. That's the other thing. I can like, you know, I don't have to fly anywhere. <laughs> That's my thing. If I don't know how to fly, sign me up. Also, the hotel it takes place in is the Renaissance Schromberg Convention Center. Hotel. It's right what by Medieval hell? Times. Oh my Dude. god. When Oh my god. Oh When's my god. our uh do you know when our next live thing is? Oh no, are we are we semi announcing that now? I was uh -oh. about to go look that up in secret. <laughs> I was about to go look that up in secret. It look, <laughs> we are doing more live shows next year, y'all, and one of them may be in March. And now we gotta go look and see when. Dude, we'll we could hit out. this up, then go to medieval we, times. That's what I'm saying. I was thinking the same thing. I was like, ooh wee. <laughs> Hell yeah. Dude. Maybe. Let's do it. Yeah, oh have you ever God, wait, you haven't been to Medieval Times, right? No. I think we talked about it like a hundred and something episodes ago. <laughs> I've never been to Medieval Times. Oh, my God. You I bet that go. could be a ton of fun. When you're like at least two beers in, it starts getting real fun. <laughs> <laughs> when you're at least two <laughs> beers in. Oh, uh, yeah. It may be very close to that. I don't know if it's that, that date. It Clearly, it can't be because that's when Adepticon is. Yeah. And all the hotels will be booked up in the entire city. So No doubt. No <laughs> doubt. No doubt about that. Oh, oh, my God. What is this? Star Wars Galactic Qualifiers are there. 
<laughs> Galactic qualifiers are epic, high-energy events that celebrate Star Wars destiny in the most enthusiastic way. Scroll down to the photo, and it's like <laughs> a bunch of people playing with like a monster energy drink. Oh, yeah. and, like, <laughs> <laughs> the most high energy. It's like people looking at cards. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's That sounds about right. Man, um, I actually, this seems like a great time. This really does. I'm actually really excited to go to this. <laughs> I want to see I love people how play Monster Everything Energy. about it is so hype. All the text is hype, and all the photos are people like just hanging out, just like yeah. You know, hey, that fifty-seven hundred attendees. That's pretty solid. That's very solid. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of people. And on top of that, I mean, here's the thing: even if you don't go to this, I, we still need to go to medieval time. Uh, yes, <laughs> we need to go there, and we need to get you down on the floor. Oh yeah, no doubter. You need to be you need to be the champion. I need to catch the rose. They always <laughs> toss roses that out to people. And usually they give it to like little kids or like little girls, but you know, sometimes they'll be like, Hey, look at that guy, here's a rose. I want the rose now. <laughs> it's like uh, it's like a rose ceremony where only one of us can truly get the rose <laughs> and I want that rose. Well battle. <laughs> I'm the battle I'm the for our love champion. <laughs> uh I feel uncomfortable with this. <laughs> battle for our love champion. Uh, Mr. Johansson, <laughs> there's two men outside saying you have to battle for their love. I'm really worried. <laughs> you'll get out there and you'll battle for their love, damn it. Uh, okay, I just want to make sure that my contract says I have to do this. <laughs> if you want this job, you will. <laughs> oh, I'm here to battle for your love, gentlemen. <laughs> Um, We're just like, yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> if it's close to that, we can go to that and Medieval Times. But otherwise, let's go to Medieval Times. And then I'll only go to the Oh, days. man. So, uh, sure. good stuff. Good stuff. Hopefully, it's done snowing by then. Uh, yes. That'd be hopefully. great. Dude, did you know that they've been having Bob Ross marathons on Twitch every weekend? They've been having Bo Bob Ross as his own channel, doesn't he? I always yeah, thought and he every did. Friday to Monday he streams. They stream like the uh, <laughs> the season. He doesn't actually stream, but you know. <laughs> the ghost of Bob <laughs> Ross streams. I'd still watch the ghost of Bob Ross. Hey, everyone, I'm doing an AMA. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, what's it like uh, in the afterlife? There are happy little clouds and happy little trees. <laughs> <laughs> so every time I Warhammer paint, I just put on Bob Ross and I paint with Bob. You know what? That sounds amazing. Because there are no mistakes. Yeah, I'll like make a little mistake on my guy, and then he's like, there's no mistakes. And I'll be like, that's right, there's no mistakes. And I'll be like, you know what? That's not that's not a mistake. That's war paint. And then I make it into war paint. It looks cool. And I'm like, thanks, Bob. And yeah. he's like, hey, no problem. Hey, you're welcome. <laughs> right? Yeah. And it's, it's kind of creepy because I'm like, Bob? And then... uh, <laughs> That's right, Eric. <laughs> it's me, Bob. Wow, it's him, Bob. Dude, oh my god, he was showing off his squirrels in one episode. I forgot his what that one. Squirrel, the one that's in his pocket that he feeds? Yeah, and he was like, this squirrel's named, like, the Appleberries or some shit. Like, he just... <laughs> the <De> de Appleberries? <laughs> that's hold not on, what he was actually named, on, but it was something like hold that. Hold on, I'm out. What a great name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Appleberries. Not, not, <laughs> not Appleberry. <laughs> <laughs> the appleberries. Sounds like a Skyrim <laughs> thing. Like, I found the appleberries. D apostrophe appleberries. <laughs> the appleberries is such a good name for a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. <laughs> Get this made. The appleberries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, some, I saw some squirrels running around today. They're going crazy. So those things were like they're like chasing each other, and you don't know if they're like playing or like mating. And I'm like, or it's a genuine squirrel chase. One of them has the nut, and they're like, get that guy. Yeah, or they're chasing him down for food. It's one of the three. Yeah. Uh, you never know what the animals. Crazy things. Yeah, they're uh, so wild. So crazy unpredictable. things, unlike animals. humans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm going to be laughing about the Appleberries for a long time. I'm letting you know. <laughs> that should be my new, like, in-game name, the Appleberries. <laughs> the Appleberries. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, Bob Ross, great guy. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, what else we do? Oh, yeah, we went to the pumpkin patch. That was pretty fun. Me and what? Toast went okay, to the pumpkin why was patch. Okay, how was it fun? It's just pumpkins, right? How is that it's fun? It's not just pumpkins. You get, like, apple cider. You get, like, a donut, like an apple donut or whatever, and then you oh, walk how around. how very Midwest. 
That yeah. sucks. Here in LA, we don't have that. Yeah, it starts getting false. Like it's sixty degrees outside. It's like cold. It's cool, but it's like not like you know. Yeah, cold. you have like a nice windbreaker, and you go yeah. out and you look for pumpkins. You look at pumpkins. And you drink some they got cider. a bunch of like random things you can take pictures with. They got like the animals there. They got like all the stuff. There's people. There's like the the moms that are like, "Come on, kids, let's go. Let's look at the pumpkins. Pick that one." The kids like, "Man!" And there's like the styling mom who's like, looks like she's like decked out, but she's still like, "Chandler, Jimmy, get let's here. choose a pumpkin." Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they look like they could be an L.A. mom, but they got to, like, style in the Midwest. Uh, right. They're styling, though, like, so, legit. So their hair is, like, a little poofier, but still styling. Oh, yeah, like, they got it curled. It's like, they went to town. <laughs> they went to a blow-dry salon or whatever those places are <laughs> that don't actually do your hair. They just dry your hair. <laughs> we dry and style only no cuts. <laughs> yeah. So there's, like, uh, it's, uh, you know, just walk around. Honestly, I just like my apple cider. And then... Uh, you got like the hayride, so you just take a hayride around. It's good time. <laughs> good time. <laughs> it's very Midwest. It's also, yeah. I guess, everywhere else but California. It's California is just like yeah, I mean, they do it. We on don't the East have Coast. weather, so we don't do that. Yeah, anywhere that actually has changing weather, <laughs> I think does it. Yes, and that's fun. Like that stuff's great. Yeah, kind of miss it. Yeah, I love it. That's why I, th well, I that's can't. Okay. I don't think I'd ever want to live where it's like hot nonstop. Like, sure, it's nice in the winter where you're like, oh man, glad it's hot here. But there's still like, you know, it makes you appreciate the heat when it comes back. Plus, you get like, uh, it's nice variety. Right. That's why I keep being like, man, if I if I could, I'd move to like one of the boroughs of of New York. Yeah. Like, I love that. I love Manhattan, but I wouldn't want to live in Manhattan because that place is just yeah. too much. What do you mean by but, like borough? anywhere around the city? Oh yeah, I'd have a great time, and I I go I go to like all the street vendors. And uh, I'd be yeah. like, "Hey, what are you doing here, <laughs> Baba Gagoo? What are you doing? You on my street? Get out of here! You my parking space, uh, Baba Gagoo." So you'd be a troll. Right? Oh, I'd I'd fit in perfectly. You'd be the troll that would be like, "Get out of my parking space." Yeah, I put a cone there. I'd be the guy who puts the cone on the <laughs> oh, street. Oh yeah, the like, cone. Who is this idiot? And oh like, my god, that's in my parking space. Actually, if I lived anywhere in New York, I wouldn't own a car. Yeah, they do that in the uh, the city in Chicago too. You put your they put like lawn chairs and shit out there. They're like, "This is my parking spot. You ain't parking here." Yeah, I would never. If I lived in a big city like that, I mean, even Chicago has rail services. I would never. I would not own a car. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, the parking you'd have to pay. I just either take ride share places or jump on uh, trains and stuff. There's yeah. literally no reason to own a car in a big city like that. That's true. But I guess L.A. doesn't have any of that, so it's like... We have none of that. <laughs> L.A. is, like, not... L.A.'s eight big cities crammed together, and none of them work <laughs> together well. <laughs> it's like uh, the United Kingdom of the medieval ages. It... <laughs> Yes, that's. I mean, sure, okay. I think it's I get like, what you're going for. Get out of our lane, and it's like Wales. We'll beat you up, and then in England's like, hey, we'll fucking beat on it, on it. Then they all yell at each other, and then France is hold like, on. Oh, hold on, hold on. What? That's your French? <laughs> Sacre bleu. We're coming. I, I get. I really want a uh, like a buddy comedy show of your British guy and my New York guy. And I'm like, hey, what are you doing? I'm probably gonna be with the move. <laughs> oh, you're fucking trying to fucking party. Hey. What do you mean you're trying to fucking party? I don't even speak a language. What are you saying to me? Oh, I'm probably gonna be move. It's, it's football. <laughs> That's right. Go, go Giants. I'm probably be. Oh, Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> Liverpool. Ah, uh, Liverpool. <laughs> oh, Liverpool. <laughs> oh, Liverpool. Righteous. I always remember that one British guy just being like, oh, righteous Slytherin. That was my favorite British saying I think I've ever heard, giving him a righteous Slytherin. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, it's like that, uh, that, uh, Scottish guy who was like, <laughs> he's like, that's a nice deck. <laughs> 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 So <laughs> it's a pumpkin patch. Dude, Fortnite has 338,000 viewers right now, and they're all just watching like a black hole. Earlier today on YouTube, there's 4 million people watching a black hole. What the shit? It's because all the people that are like, I'm a variety streamer, are just like 
you know, I'm a streamer that streams whatever's popular are literally just streaming that right now. Yes, that's exactly that's exactly what that is. Yeah. What I think is fascinating is today I went and got dinner earlier and I live at like a crazy nexus of for people who aren't aware Fortnite went down as part of an event or something. Right. Mm. And so kids all over the world are losing their damn minds. I live in an intersection of a college, like a big college is near me and then a bunch of high schools. And then like a bunch of um, like parks and beach areas, right? Mm. So I'm I'm right in between all of that. Today I went to dinner. I've never seen so many Fortnite shirts in my life. I feel like <laughs> everyone who's playing Fortnite had to go outside today. <laughs> and I was just like sitting there and I kept seeing Fortnite shirts. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I assume they all were like, well, I've got nothing else to do. I guess I'll leave the house. And they just went out. And I was like, whoa, all right, Fortnite. It also made me realize that Fortnite is very, very popular. Because it, it was at first I was like, ha funny, that's cute. And then I was like, oh, my God, that's a lot of people in Fortnite shirts. That's a lot of money someone made off of that. Honestly, it's brilliant marketing. They always are brilliant. They're always genius. I just don't. I don't know what they thought was going to happen, though, when they shut down their game and made the joke that it was dead forever. And then there are videos all over the Internet of kids, like, crying and breaking their TVs and stuff. I, I don't know what they thought was going to happen, but uh, thank you, because it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the kids don't understand it. They don't get, you know, marketing ploys and lying. There's like, Fortnite's dead, and they're like, ah. Oh my, it's really, you can hear parents laughing at their kids. They're like crying in front of their TVs like, why? <laughs> <laughs> if I was a parent, I'd be like, would you cry this much if I just died? Would you be like, you're not Fortnite. Dude, I remember when I was a kid, I went and saw uh, Sesame Street on ice and I got a balloon <laughs> and that balloon floated away into the sky when I got out of the car and I cried. I believe, I believe, what was the balloon of though? I don't remember, but I remember seeing that balloon fly away and crying. Part of me wants it to be either Bert or Ernie. I think it was, uh, somebody was blue. It might've been like, uh, who's blue? Is he like Cookie Monster or like, uh, what's the other guy? Groucho or some shit. Grover. <laughs> Groucho? Grover. Yeah, I think it might've been Grover Is or Grover still around? Why would Grover ever leave? Well, because I haven't seen, you know, when they when they do that, like, hey, this is all the people that's on Sesame Street. But I I feel like I haven't seen Grover in forever. I mean, have you Although, watched Sesame Street in forever? No, but you know how they have, like, publicity things and they do. It's always like Elmo or, you know, all oh, those yeah. other people. Yeah, they pick the well, popular ones. Here's the thing. I went to Grover's... Uh, wikipedia page which is pretty amazing the fact that exists but they have sesame street is modified in different national markets and grover is often renamed here are some groger groger grover names <laughs> in germany grover is groby a diminutive of the german grobe meaning rough or rude in pakistan he's banka <laughs> banka in Portugal, he's Galter or Walter. <laughs> in, in Spain, he's Coco because his mouth and head are in the shape of a coconut. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. In Latin America and Puerto Rico, his name is Archibaldo. <laughs> <laughs> Archibald. <laughs> I think that's my favorite one. And in Poland, his name is Florik. <laughs> this. I'm learning Florik. And in Germany, his name is Tommy Two-Tone. <laughs> <laughs> he has three albums. It's crazy. Actually, four. One of them was a they file. I love Grover over there. <laughs> oh, my God. I got one more thing. Okay, yes. So, as background noise on the television, we have uh, been keeping uh -huh. on QVC. And why? I don't know why, but it's like the perfect background noise. And let me tell you why. No, it's not why. It's why? live okay, nonstop. So it's got like a bit of that like Twitch element to it, right? It's live. You can buy stuff if you're like, hey, that looks cool. But like rarely, I think I bought like one thing. What What did you buy? There's a hose. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it's a pretty good hose. I used it once. And you got me going to Q. I'm literally going to yeah. QVC right now. And it's I want like, you to know that. I'm going all to just, QVC to find value. The thing is like they're always positive. 
that they're positive because they're trying to sell you stuff, but there's still something about it that's like, they're just like, it's just a great item, you know? Give it to your friends. Give it to your family. This goat lotion is going to be perfect. And it's like, I don't know, it's just, a, it's just a happy background thing to have on if you're like cleaning or doing something else. I typed in swords and it said the page wasn't working. <laughs> swords? Knives. Yeah, remember the guys who sell knives on oh, QVC? Oh, yeah, knives. And he's like, you can get this samurai <laughs> ninja throwing star katana with the dragon inlay for only fourteen ninety nine. But not only that, we're going to throw in this <laughs> samurai sword created by Hitori Hanzo himself. <laughs> There's only 800 of these remaining. <laughs> We're going to need you to call right now. My favorite is like they have the people call in and it's always like the old women and they're like, I bought the uh, pumpkin candle and I love it. I burn it all the time and I gave it to one of my friends and they burn it all the time. And my friend Cheryl, she can't burn it because she has allergies. But sometimes she just she just burns it anyway, you know. <laughs> and uh... <laughs> she just self combusts. Yeah, right. Because of those candles, <laughs> yeah. she is also made mostly of wax. <laughs> yes. yes. And they're just like, wow, that's fantastic, Cheryl. Uh, would you recommend that people buy like twenty of these right now? And she's like. Uh, I think Cheryl's gone, but I think I that bought she would twenty of say them. It. <laughs> she would definitely buy it. Here's the thing: specialty shop. Oh my god, gifts for the big kid. That's it. That's the one. <laughs> That's gifts you. for the big kid. That's me. Let's find <laughs> out what gifts are coming for me. Okay. If this website works, QVC.com, <laughs> not working. Like every time I click something, it's like mm, no. I just clicked new. Wait. Gifts for the big what? The hell? I clicked gifts for the big kid, <laughs> and it took me to a page that says. Gifts for the big kids, fun for young ones, and the young of heart. And then it's just a blank, empty page. There's nothing here. <laughs> Uh-oh, my QVC the... stopped working. I think you crashed My it. QVC is actively on right now. I'm on their webpage, and it linked me. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It linked me to their live stream. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a man in glasses who looks like one of the actors from Saturday Night Live. <laughs> Lighting candles. One of them is called Partridge in a Pear Tree. Another is called Vanilla Spice and Everything Nice. These lighting candles. And they're like, these candles are the best smelling candles. Mind you, he lit all four types of smells next to each other and then walked away. So he lit all these scents and then like left. <laughs> I'm also, you. he said that candles are the gift that keeps giving. All right, I'm going to shut that down because that's crazy. Dude, I'm telling you. This is prime it's background television. It's a gift television. that keeps giving candles. <laughs> <laughs> they keep on giving until they're gone. They keep on giving. Speaking of gifts, if you have a nurse, doctor, a dentist, or anyone in your life that is in the medical profession or the healthcare profession, I assume those are one of the same. Although I could be wrong, right? I don't know. Yeah. If they're in your family or they're just a friend, right? And you're thinking about what you could get them as holiday season approaches, or maybe you're one of them and you're like, man... I need some new scrubberoonies. Figs are the way to go. These people dedicate their lives to caring for others. And uh, we think that if you're listening out there and you're one of them or you know one of them, that they should feel good when they're doing it. And so Figs is the best way to do that. Figs is an amazing company that's making scrubs stylish and functional for the people who deserve it the most. For years, nurses, doctors, dentists, and all these other awesome medical professionals like have been forced to wear scratchy, ill-fitting scrubs. No more. Figs has created the highest quality medical apparel so that medical professionals can look their best, feel their best, and perform their best every single day. Every set of figs is antimicrobial, protects against germs, bacteria. It's ridiculously soft, moisture wicking, and features four-way stretch. You going north, you going south, you going east, you going west, they stretching everywhere. They on the compass rows of stretch. Figs are made with yoga waistbands and come in a variety of styles from classic straight legs to joggers to skinny styles. If you're that kind of doctor and you're like, skinny styles only, please. Figs gives back too, and so can you. Every time you shop at Figs, they give scrubs to healthcare providers in need around the world through their Threads for Threads initiative. To date, Figs has donated hundreds of thousands of sets in over 35 countries. They make a great gift for the lifesavers in your life. They make a great gift for yourself if you're out there doing all the work. Figs 
is a good way to say thank you. So, whether you are one of the awesome humans that work in the healthcare industry, or someone who wants to say thanks to one of these folks, Figs is going to make it easy by providing you with 15% off your first purchase by using code COX. If you go to wearfigs, W-E-A-R-F-I-G-S dot com and enter the code COX at checkout, you get 15% off scrubs. Also, I'm not even gonna lie. I'm not even gonna lie to y'all. You don't really need to be a doctor. Sometimes scrubs just feel good. (laughs) I'm not saying I have some, and I'm not saying I wear them around the house just cause, but they're great. They're like the coolest pants to just chill out in and it makes you feel like you could be like a tv doctor not a real doctor because they're actual <laughs> professionals but like a tv doctor you know like give me 50 cc's of sex stat so go to wearfigs.com and enter code cox for 15 percent off your first purchase also today uh-oh uh-oh we have to get spooky crendor it's the most wonderful time of year Halloween! Remember when planning your costume as a kid was like the most fun you could have before Christmas? Well, now you're an adult, and Halloween feels a little less Halloweeny. Candy gives me stomach pain. <laughs> <laughs> well, me undies is bringing back the childlike joy of picking your favorite costume because they have me undies Halloween onesies with spooky prints. Aboo. They're spooky soft and designed to be the best thing you've ever put in your body, like the undies that they're named after. So it's better than dressing up as that, you know, fluffy kitten or the brain-eating zombie or whatever the hell you're going to dress up as. Instead, you can wear a Halloween onesie from Me Undies. They come in extra small all the way up to 4X and softness for everyone. They have the most unique prints out there, but the Halloween prints are another level of spooky. This year, MeUndies is coming out with a variety of festive prints to really put the boo in your booty. Didn't think MeUndies would up your Halloween costume game? Well, think again. Their unique prints are designed to be mixed and matched and turned into the most guaranteed prize-winning costume contest costume. If you don't feel like leaving the house, that's cool too, because guess what? You can just swim around the house. I mean, that's what I would do. Yeah. I wouldn't. I'm not going to go to a Halloween party. Then I have to go outside. And there's monsters and stuff out there. That's where the devil gets you. It's all Hallow's Eve, everybody. MeUndies has a great offer for you listening right now. If you're a first-time purchaser, you can get 15% off at MeUndies.com. 15% off free shipping. This is a no-brainer, especially because zombies are coming to steal those brains. So watch out. If you go. To MeUndies.com slash Crendor. That's me. You can get 15% off your first pair. Free shipping. 100% satisfaction guaranteed. If you don't like it, they will take it back. You lose nothing because it's free shipping. MeUndies.com slash Crendor. That is MeUndies.com slash Crendor. I wear these every single day. I love them to death. My tush feels good. My booty feels boo. Beautiful. <laughs> that's, ter- <laughs> that's terrible. All right, that's that's, that's chapter chapter seven. Let's do that. Oh, hey, how's it going? I uh, normally you know you get the segue and everything, but I guess. Oh, okay, everybody's job is okay. All right, yeah, I'll take it. Um, yo, what's up? Uh, man, uh, looking down, I see some traffic. Uh, dude, oh my god. It's almost Christmas. We're like two months away. From, dude, we're one month away from like Black Friday. What the shit? It's a good time of year. It's a good time of year. Oh, man. That's <laughs> a great time of year. Can't wait. Holiday season, dude. Um, it's a great time. It's the best of time. It's the worst of times. It's uh, thank God for alcohol times. You know? Love that stuff. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, the traffic. Uh... <laughs> It's uh, it's going. Uh, back to you. <laughs> Thanks, Crendor. Now let's go over to Crendor at the weather desk. How's that weather? Weather. What's up? We're over here at the weather desk. Uh, let's uh, type in a good old fashioned. Uh, I don't know. Yam. Yam. Yamagata. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna head over to let Wappy take it. Wappy activated Yamagata. She Yamagata perfect prefecture Japan. 58 degrees, cloudy, feels like 58. 
high 60 degrees today, rain 70%, chance cloudy with showers high around 60 fear and height, winds light variable, chance rain 70%, tonight 53 degrees 60%, Tuesday 62 degrees, fair and heights 40%, Tuesday night 39, 10%, Wednesday 65, 10%. And, and, and. He's a little rusty. Yep. I can tell. Um, I can tell that. I haven't, yeah. yeah, we haven't really had Whoppy in a while, so I think he's, he's got It'll be fine next time. Uh, I mean, 82% humidity. You got the 3 out of 10 UV index. Watch out for those ultraviolet rays. You got the sun coming up at 545, setting at 503. That's actually kind of like, what was that, 545 to 503 in Japan? That seems kind of wonky. Hold on, what is it? What do you it? mean? To p.m. Like, uh, 503 p.m. Yeah, but like here in Chicago, it rises like, 7 a.m. and then sets at like 6 p.m. So we actually, it rises a little bit later, but it sets a bit later as well. That's kind of, I like it when the sun rises at like 8 a.m. or some shit. Because, you know, I go to bed like 4 or 5 p.m. or a.m. Yeah, they... Well, I would, I would imagine, aren't they higher up on the... They, <laughs> on the what? No. I mean, they're, they're, they're almost <laughs> exactly where... I keep trying to figure out, like, Japan... Compared to the United States, where they are, see, Los you know, Angeles. relative to the relative to the equator. Yeah, in LA, it rises like seven a.m., sets at six twenty p.m. too. So, like, I think uh, I'm just trying to figure out if that means Japan's more north than Chicago. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the parallel. Chicago like and the... LA are pretty similar, so I feel like it's something with that part of the world instead. Like, what about I mean, Korea? It looks. It does look like it on the globe. It does look like it is more along the Canadian line of things, but still, I never really think that. Like, I could be a crazy person. Yeah, I never really think that either. In Seoul but it, but or Seoul, Korea, the, the, the it rises top... at 638, sets at 557, so they're actually more towards our time in Seoul. The top of Japan is along the 45-degree north parallel, and it looks like 45 degrees goes... Right through, like it's almost the same as Chicago. Crazy. Oh man, so, yeah. I don't so know Japan, and Chicago works. are roughly, they're very, very close. Interesting. Yeah. So why is it that way? It's like on par with San Francisco, right? So San Francisco should have like the same time. I don't think that's how that works. I think we're we're trying to math out things that aren't correct. <laughs> I think we're trying to like use science to prove things that science does not prove. Real smart people tell. <laughs> Tell us yeah. about Real smart people with actual math. brains. What is going on here? Okay, but what about Spain, right? Like, what about... <laughs> what about grid? Spain? They are... Sun rises at 8.23 a.m., sets at 7.37 p.m. What the shit? Dude, that's like... I'd love that. Dude, oh my Flatter God. Flat theory proved incorrect <laughs> once again. <laughs> listen, listen, all right? Spain actually has my ideal time zone, or like sunrise time. 7 a.m. sunrise, and then what? <laughs> no, 7 p.m. sunrise. 23 a.m. sunrise. What? How's that possible? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's like a great. <laughs> that's like a great sunrise. And then 7:37 like... p.m. sunset. That's like ideal for me. I love that. <laughs> so I go Spain to bed. And the sun have like a, they're like they have an agenda. Right? They're like, look, we're gonna get up late. We're gonna have a siesta. So you're gonna have to keep that damn sun up a little longer. And the sun's like, all right. Dude, we made a deal. We have a nice roll. Six four two. Six four two. There you go. <laughs> uh, and that's the weather. All right, sports. Sports. Welcome to the sports desk. We've had some crazy sports action. Actually, all the sports are kicking off. Uh, we're actually in prime sports season right now, where pretty much all the sports are uh, going. Uh, so in we'll start with baseball news. Uh, right now the Yankees Astros. Uh, are tied at two in the bottom of the 10th. Uh, and the Yankees are up 1-0 in that series. Uh, and the only people who want the Yankees to win are actual Yankees fans. Uh, the Dodgers got knocked out by the Nationals, which is funny. Because, um, you know, Dodgers were like, this is our year. We won like 800 games. And then they're like, we lose. Um, <laughs> so <Yes>. uh, <laughs> then the Nationals, I believe, are up 2 uh, to nothing on the Cardinals. Nationals are on a roll now. They beat the Dodgers, and they're just like, let's go. Uh, and so it's going to be one of those two teams uh, going to the World Series. So good for them. Uh, we basketball see. preseason has started up. The Bulls actually won today. Go Bulls. They Maybe they'll be good this year. Uh, um, 
I hope so. Sure. Dude, they got so many good draft picks. They got to be good now. Uh, then uh, the hockey season has started. And I believe, let me check here. Carolina is 5-1. and one. Buffalo is 4-0. and oh. Could it be Buffalo, Buffalo has finally gotten back to the point of getting to the playoffs and losing? Who knows? Um, yeah, I think that's I was about to say. <laughs> thank you, thank you for saying it correctly. Getting Hell the yeah. playoffs and losing once again. <laughs> uh Blackhawks are 0 2 and 1. Fantastic. Uh and Nashville 3 and 2. Edmonton. Edmonton's 5 and 0. Hot dog. Edmonton looking good. Uh, and Colorado 4 and 0. So they're off to very good starts. And then today we had football. Well, football. Football. Actual football. Uh, oh. Oh, uh, oh. New England beat the I Giants. I thought we were finally going to get those scores. Like the LA Galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> New England beat the Giants on Thursday. Carolina beat Tampa Bay in London. The Seahawks beat the Browns 32-28. to 28. Close game, but the Browns continue to be the Browns. But how is Jacksonville doing? We'll get there. We'll get there. Oh, my God. Houston beat the Chiefs. Uh, Washington beat the Dolphins in the Loser Bowl. Uh, the Vikings beat the Eagles. Big win for them. The New Orleans Saints defeated the Jacksonville Jaguars 13-6. to Come on. I know. Saints. Bortles. They said Saints, Quiet, Minshew. No, not Bortles. Minshew. Bortles. <laughs> Bortles is the guy who was with them before. <laughs> <laughs> Saints quiet Minshew mania handle Jaguars 13-6. So sad news there. Uh, Man, the come on, Minshew. <laughs> Ravens barely beat the Bengals. Uh, of course. The 49ers beat the Rams. The Cardinals beat the Falcons, who are in a super downward spiral. The Broncos shut out the Titans. The Jets beat the Cowboys somehow. And the Steelers finally won against the Chargers. Th thank God they did that. Yeah. <laughs> they needed that. Uh, in fact, yeah. they are somehow, some way, still in the running for the division. That's because our division sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's why somehow, some way. The Steelers are like perpetually up against the Browns and the Bengals <laughs> and the Ravens. <laughs> They're only two games back of the Ravens at this point. They're tied with the Browns now, and the Bengals are 0 and 6. <laughs> so. <laughs> Sad times oh, over Bengals, there. how are you so bad? It's oh, like, my heart. It's like the Browns and the Bengals just swap positions. They're like, hey, do you want to be mediocre and we'll go back to being the worst team? They're like, yeah, we'll do that. Everyone asks me all the time, you're from Ohio. Why is like the Buckeyes, why is college football so big there? Well, it's because our two professional teams <laughs> haven't been good in 40 years. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, Devlin Hodges was the Pittsburgh quarterback, and he threw for a touchdown, a pick, and 132 yards. It's not bad. You know what? Great. Let's get some new blood in there. Yeah. No more of this Roethlisberger nonsense. Yeah. So looks like he's got some... Bortles! Uh... Get Bortles! Bortles! <laughs> I think Bortles is on the Rams, actually. <laughs> we need we need that Bortles. He's the Rams Get him in up. there. And uh, he might be playing because the Rams' golf isn't doing anything. Wow, he did so bad. 13 of 24 for 78 yards. Like, I could do that. I'd be dead afterwards, but I could do it. I don't know about that. I guarantee you, I could, I could do get that. 78 yards. I would yards. love to see you out on the football field. <laughs> you and, like, 320-pound like linebackers are running at you. It's oh, yeah, like, I'd be dead. I could do that. I would, I would have serious injury. Uh, and that's sports. <laughs> All right, Crendor, what is our big news story of the day? Big news story of the day. Uh, Well, one big news story is that the McRib is back. That's true. Did you get a package in the mail? No. I did. Oh, I got a package in the mail. Oh, my God. Crendor. Crendor. What? I need to... I can't spoil this for anyone right now. All right. I will simply say this week, go to my Twitter, at Jesse Cox. <laughs> I... Got a package. So we, earlier this week, got an email from McDonald's. McDonald's was like, we'd like to send you some things. And of course, I was like, oh, my God, why? <laughs> and they're like, well, we saw people posting about the McCox and Crendor. So keep it up. Everyone keep posting about it. Oh, my keep God. Keep posting about it. They were like, we saw people posting about McCox and Crendor, and we love the idea. So we want to send you some things. And I was like, what could oh, they did possibly you reply send to that me? email? I did. I didn't reply to it. I need to reply to them and be like, send me McDonald's things. I did. I was like, sure, of course. <laughs> so they were like, 
will send you a big box of things to thank you. And in my mind, I'm like, what the hell could be in a big box? <laughs> I, I assumed a gift card or something. My dude. Oh, my God. In this box is the craziest things I've ever seen. I got to reply to this email right now. I can't even stress to you. <laughs> The things that are in this box, I've never seen anything like it. I'm going to let you in on one of them. On one thing. I'm going to okay. give you all a hint. One of the things included was a McRib calendar. Oh, my and it God. Is the same <laughs> illustration of a McRib, but in the background, every month is different background. <laughs> it's the oh exact same gosh. McRib, but like pumpkins in one. And then you put it, it's like in snow in the next one. And like the next one after that is this like, <laughs> like summertime McRib. It's Here's the best part. It's a McRib calendar that starts on, starts in October 2019 and ends in September 2020. It doesn't even go a full year. <laughs> oh, my God. That's amazing. It is. It is incredible. We were in the office like, wait, why doesn't it go until the end of next year? We are like, wait, it doesn't even go until October next year. Oh, my God. I need this right now. <laughs> Put it right on my desk. Oh my god! So yeah, get your uh, go get your McRibs, get your jalapeno cheeseburger, and make a Cox and Crandor. I think they actually brought the jalapeno cheeseburgers back. Or, I haven't seen that. Or was it the jalapeno McChicken? Um, well, we have different ones. There's oh yeah, fish right. ones, and there's like you know, there's the Mick Guy Hero, and there's the you know, there's oh, all yeah, sorts of different that's ones. That's right. I feel like I've forgotten half of them though. We need to have a database. Yeah. Of this, somebody needs to like send us a database. <laughs> Yeah, you know, on a, like a wiki, on a wiki somewhere. We need to have this there so people can go there and, and really truly experience it. Yeah. So start tweeting your. I think we have the episode titled like McCox and Crender. Go listen to that episode because we we're not going to. And then yeah, no, that's the, I didn't do that. <laughs> create those things and tweet it to us. Because that's one of my favorite things is seeing people be like, "Look, I've made the thing and now I'm eating it," and I'm like, "Oh my god!" And I always like it. Yes. Also include at McDonald's in it so oh, they yeah. know. So they send us more weird shit because it is incredible. <laughs> There's one this, thing I it's, love. It's weird shit. It is a giant box. <laughs> Phil, oh, my God, Crendor. There's like 80 to 90 holiday cards. I'm not going to spoil the cards, <laughs> but the cards are insane. I'm just, there's like, there, we should then. Oh, my God. We need to send these cards to people. <laughs> we, need to, we, need to, we need to have Dan make a really weird photo oh my God. and insert it into every card and then <laughs> send it to like. <laughs> random people just random people i love it <laughs> oh my god i still need to get my year yeah. on mcrib i i'm oh there's a lot there's a lot in there i don't know how i'm gonna you know what i'm not gonna spoil it just i need yeah. to shut up it's too we'll, funny uh, yeah you can tweet it out and then we'll talk about it like next week or something yes yes severely oh my god <laughs> here it is <laughs> Oh, boy. Here we go. <laughs> Severely inebriated Florida woman found standing in McDonald's drive through with toddler. <laughs> <laughs> Full Final. circle, baby. She wanted that big rib. <laughs> <laughs> A woman. It's in Newport, Richie. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Of course it is. Newport, Richie returns. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is his this is his uh wife it's gotta Newport be port rochelle oh my god she is 35 but that is like oof. that's a hard 35. that's a hard that's a there you go that's a hard 35 <laughs> all right let me see let me see florida oh my god <laughs> she looks that like is she a hard 35 just came back from the war <laughs> she does you know she looks like she's gonna sing a song about gruel like <laughs> Can I have some like, Oh, I want to just help this woman. Oh, my God. Um, a woman found standing in the middle of a drive through with a toddler on Thursday night is facing child neglect and possession charges. The report says Melanie Hancocks, 35, was severely inebriated. Not even inebriated. Severely inebriated. Severely, yeah. When she was found unmoving in the drive through of the McDonald's on US-19 in Port Ritchie just before midnight. Do you think if she had just gone through the drive-thru and moved, everything would have been fine? But she was, like, holding up the line, and people got pissed. Well, she probably just passed out. She would have, like, passed out in her car and just not moved in the drive-thru anyway, and people would get pissed. I'd be pissed. That's I'd true. want my quarter pounder. Hancocks was standing in the drive-thru with a three-year-old child as vehicles drove around them. 
<laughs> she was arrested and found to be in possession of methadone hydrochloride. I don't even know what that is. Sounds about right. And yep. alprazolam. I think that's a. I think that's uh, Xanax. Alprazolam. That's like Xanax, and I only know because I have like the most like small dose of Xanax you can have. Right, for, right, like, right. Traveling. Yeah, yeah, sure. All right. Because otherwise, listen. I want to get addicted to this yeah, shit. All right, all I right, am, Jesse Pinkman. All right, let's see. I will say though, when they gave me okay, when they when I got my gallbladder out, they gave me like twenty hydrocodones, and I made sure I only took like a maximum of like two if I was in really bad pain, because that stuff is like, I was like, this is why soccer moms get addicted to pills. <laughs> Because that stuff's like, you pull like a Kramer. Because that stuff's like, Jerry. I only took like 10 of them for my gallbladder thing. So I had 10 left. So I was like, all right, I won't throw them out. So I took so them I when sold I them had. On the street. Well, I took, I took them when I had my toenails removed. And so I, uh, I would like be sitting there like with my toes all wrapped up playing WoW. And I was playing BFA. And I was like, dude, playing the auction house is so fun. And I was like, oh my God. That's how I know these things are strong. I'm having fun playing BFA. <laughs> so Dude. that was like... <laughs> Dude, have you ever seen an orc's butt? <laughs> so then, yeah, I was like... Those things are so flat. It just, it makes you like have a really happy high. And I was like, man, I do, I want more of these, but I don't want more of these. So watch out you for are that, not, You are not selling sobriety very well. Like, I didn't want any listen, more, but I kind of want. You can't more. sell sobriety if it's like it's like. Listen, they're pretty fun if you take those. All right, but don't <laughs> take them <laughs> because. <laughs> well, the thing. I was taking like one. All right, one is a good time. Okay, because no, you're like, don't. hey, one leads to two, two leads to it, like more. Only and then if you, get you let it. Like I cap myself. Well, here's the thing. I also got them because I was in actual pain from surgery and like toenail removal. Right. That's true. Crandor like, earned his. I wasn't his just taking him high. like, ah, it's a Wednesday. Time to take take my ibuprofen. <laughs> so you know, it's time for Mama's little helping. I earned my pain relief. Um, but yeah, I haven't. You know, there's like crazy people that are just like, I have pain. I stab my jaw for like no reason. Give me pain pills. It's like Jesus. Well, and then they end up in the, the drive through at McDonald's. Just start drinking like everyone else. Uh. So anyway, <laughs> uh, Hancox is charged with two counts. Possess Wait, that's it? Where's the follow-up? There's no follow-up. We never get a follow-up. We never find out what happened to them, why she was on the truck, where that baby came from. Was it her kid? Yeah, like it might not even been her kid. We don't know. <laughs> it's like, what if it was just a baby? <laughs> This what if it was, like, it was just a three year She like had someone's kid. We don't oh know. We God. never have answers. We never get answers. Ohio McDonald's customer left with broken nose and shattered cheekbone after fight with manager over wrong order. I came in there ordering kids meals. Wait, what did they get? I don't know. Let's find out. In Ohio, Wait, are you <laughs> telling me you came in for a kid's meal, got something more than a kid's meal, and was like, I'm so mad I wanted that <laughs> toy. Brittany, Brittany Price, not Brittany, Brittany became embroiled in a heated confrontation with the manager of the Coleraine Township store after going in to complain about mistakes in an order for cheeseburger and Happy Meals. A police report named the McDonald's... Oh, cheeseburger manager. and Happy Meals. <laughs> <laughs> and Happy Meals. A police report named the McDonald's manager as Nashonda Johnson, noting she was questioned by officers about the woman's oh, allegations. Oh, you know Nashonda Johnson don't take shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, she ain't letting you get those cheeseburgers. Oh hell no, you screwed, man. <laughs> Give it up and go home. Uh, and the report said Johnson stated, as a reaction, she began throwing food objects back at Miss Price when food objects struck Miss Price in the face, leaving an injury. Witnesses at the scene noticed Johnston had retaliated and began throwing food back. In an on-air segment, Price could be seen with a severely bruised left eye and what appeared to be cuts or stitches along her nose and cheekbone. The woman said the manager may have had an object in her hand. She was over the counter, so I think she literally swung with something over the counter and hit me with the face with it, Price elaborated. Temperatures were high. You know, everybody was a little hostile, but at the end of the day, I came in there ordering kids' meals. I didn't come in there to have a brawl, you know? It remains unclear what type of object was involved. Price said she'd be undergoing surgery. Man, I hope it was like an apple pie. <laughs> no one ever orders those things and they just sit there and I imagine they're like molten yeah, rock lava. rock hard. 
Rock hard, rock and then you hard, break it open, lava. and it's molten lava. Oh yeah, I would. <laughs> I would love to see someone get hit in the face with an apple pie with one of those warm apple pies. <laughs> um. So yeah, comment below as well if you've ordered an apple pie before and if it was rock hard or molten lava. Uh, I man, those things. Now I kind of want one. I haven't had a McDonald's apple pie thing. I'm gonna say maybe. 25 years <laughs> like maybe since i was a kid yeah i, I think can't... i haven't had one in like maybe 15 to 20 years right and every time when i worked there old people would come in every sunday and be like cup of coffee and one of your apple pie <laughs> oh my god and then if you tweet us your mcdonald's apple pies you order they oh might my send god. us apple pie calendars y'all <laughs> here's the real challenge <laughs> here's the real challenge <laughs> We're gonna we we need to have one called the Mick Sloth and the Mick Sloth and Sloth Door. The we need we need a good name. Yeah. Door, help me out here. I don't have a name. Uh, the Mick Apple Sloth. The Apple Bear Sloth. <laughs> oh my! Oh, the the Apple Berry. All right. The Mick the Apple Berry. <laughs> <laughs> the mix, the mix to appleberry is one apple pie and put it in a McRib. I'm like, no way. That's... If anyone orders this, that is, you are a true <laughs> You're a hero. Soul. <laughs> Do they even sell the apple pies appleberry. in anymore? Oh, the Mc the Appleberry. I just typed That's in it. McDonald's apple pie. McDonald's. They definitely do. They definitely do still sell them. I I Baked see them on the menu pie. all oh, yeah. the time. Yes, they do. It has. Oh, it actually does, isn't as bad as I thought it'd be nutrition wise. All I'm saying is, if you want, <laughs> you can start the trend of getting a Mc the Appleberry. <laughs> 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 D apostrophe Appleberry. Yeah. And you actually, so M E C capital D apostrophe Appleberry. Right. If you get one of these, tweet at us and McDonald's apple pie on that McRib. You gotta let us know. <laughs> I will never do this. I don't want to die. But someone out there who has a death wish, we're counting on you. We need to live vicariously through you. We know you're listening. We know one of you out there is crazy enough to do this. Send us that photo. Please. Please do it. Do it tomorrow <laughs> if you can, or today. Here's the thing. Potentially, couldn't the pork and apple go together? It actually kind of could. Couldn't it? Maybe we've come up with something that's like when people found out you could dip French fries into Frosties at, at yeah. Wendy's. Dude, my Maybe mom used to make like game. a pork roast with like cinnamon apples. It's like pretty much the same that's thing. That's what I'm saying. Except this says barbecue sauce, which is probably <laughs> yeah. insane. Yeah. But, but, what if you could get one without barbecue sauce? Oh my God, you probably could. What if you could say no barbecue sauce on my McRib, please? And then they put on the apple pie. Oh my God. Okay, you can't, so you can't get barbecue sauce. You have to get the apple pie and put it on instead. And that's your... Here's the thing. As a person who worked at McDonald's, <laughs> I know if, this might have changed, but I seem to recall that what they would do is they would grill the the patties, the like fake-ass pork patties, yeah. and then they would dump them in the barbecue sauce, uh, like a big vat, and they'd sit there and like... So that's how they cook them. Keep hot. Yeah, I guess. Mm. My question is, could they grill the, up the patty and then not... Could you say I want to make rib, but not in the sauce? What would that even know. taste like? What would that would that have a taste? We need one of you. <laughs> we need one of you who's patient enough to wait for them to grill one of those things for you. Then put the apple oh pie God. on it and eat that thing. Is it delicious? Have we created a new menu item? We may have gone too far. <laughs> some say, some say we're using our power for evil instead of good. <laughs> Listen, you gotta try it. No, I'm curious. You have to try it. Yeah. Well, let us know what happens when you do, and then hit us up on one of our socials. Crendor, hit him with the socials. We got so many socials. YouTube.com slash Cox and Crendor podcast. If you want to go into the backlog, find the old Cox and Crendor McDonald's episode from like a year ago or whatever it was, or listen to all our episodes. Uh, you can also go to SoundCloud. We're on there. We're on iTunes. We're on Spotify. We're all over. Uh, also, 
youtube.com slash Cox and Crendor. All one word. If you just want to see the animations that Dan makes, they're very funny. Uh, more funny than us. Also, you can go to twitter.com slash Crendor. Twitter.com slash Jesse Cox. Facebook.com slash Crendor. Facebook.com slash Jesse Cox. YouTube.com slash Crendor. YouTube.com slash Jesse Cox. Twitch.tv slash Crendor. Twitch.tv slash Jesse Cox. Uh, please watch us. We need help. Uh, <laughs> we need help. That's for sure. <laughs> and that's all. That's all of my thing. All right. Well, that's it for us. Thank you so much for listening or watching or whatever the hell you're doing, wherever you're at. We'll be back next week with another episode. That's it. Thank you. And as always, I'm gonna roll some dice. Two, three, four. <laughs> to be continued. Uh, 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 uh.